welcome to Empowering and thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel and welcome to Anatomy 101. In this video, we're going to review the vertebral column. We will also go over the sections of the spinal column, the curvatures, the importance of the curvatures, and more. So we have a lot in store for you. This is actually the eighth video in the series, so if you have not seen the other videos, you can click the link above and you will find the entire playlist. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, please do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up, post a comment, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell for notifications. Okay, without any further ado, let's get right into the video. The Axial Skeleton, the Vertebral Column. The vertebral column is a flexible column of bones extending from the base of the skull to the pelvis. It is the vertebral column that houses and protects the fragile spinal cord. The vertebral column is also called the spine, the backbone, or the spinal column. It is made up of a series of bones, each called a vertebrae. Each vertebrae in the spinal column is separated by intervertebral discs, which act as ligaments that hold the vertebrae together and allow for movement. The human vertebral column is made up of 33 bones, or vertebrae. Vertebrae and the spine can be grouped into five distinct regions, depending on their vertebral structure and location. The spine is composed of the following 24 presacral vertebrae, which is 7 cervical vertebrae, 12 thoracic vertebrae, and 5 lumbar vertebrae. The sacrum is composed of 5 fused sacral vertebrae. The coccyx is made up of 4 fused coccygeal vertebrae. Functions of the vertebral column. While the vertebral column's main function is to enclose and protect the spinal cord within the spinal canal, the vertebral column also has the following significant functions. It forms the body's central axis. It also supports the body's weight above the pelvis. It plays a role in posture and movement curvatures. Curvature refers to a normal, concave shape of the spine. All in all, there are four anterior-posterior curvatures observed in the vertebral column, which are the thoracic, the sacral, the cervical, and the lumbar. Both the thoracic and sacral curvatures concave anteriorly, while the cervical and lumbar concave posteriorly. Thoracic and sacral curvatures are called the primary curves. These curvatures form during embryonic development. On the other hand, the cervical and lumbar curvatures are called secondary curves because unlike the primary curves that develop during fetal development, the secondary curves form after birth. The cervical curvature forms by lifting or supporting the head whereas the lumbar curvature develops as a result of walking. So how important is the spine's proper curvature? Well, the spine's proper curvature creates and gives the spine its flexibility. Each curve creates a spring-like structure that enables the vertebral column to serve as the body's natural shock absorber. The curves of the spinal column allow for durability despite wear and tear from daily physical activities. Besides creating support and allowing for flexibility, the spine's natural curvature also helps distribute the body weight evenly so that muscle groups in the body each have their own share of weight to bear. This is highly important when it comes to maintaining balance and stability especially when it comes to dynamic movement, like bending or lifting, or any movement that requires the spine to simultaneously support your weight and move along with your body. Curves also function to reduce tension forming between each vertebral disc. The natural curvatures of the spine ensure that the discs are not stacked directly on top of the other, 
so that the weight of the column is distributed evenly. And so each vertebrae will only bear a portion of the column's weight. Spine Curvature Disorders In some cases, the spine's natural curvature becomes exaggerated or misaligned, forming curvature abnormalities like the following, like scoliosis. People who have scoliosis have a lateral curvature to their spine. Lordosis. Individuals with lordosis have an exaggerated convex curvature of their spine. Essentially, their spine curves inward at the lower back. This condition is also termed swayback. Kyphosis is another disorder, and individuals with kyphosis have an exaggerated rounded back or concave curvature. All right guys, I really hope you liked that video going over the spine or vertebral column. I hope you learned a ton. Please make sure you stay tuned because in the next video we're going to go over the intervertebral disc. We will go over the different parts of the disc, where they're located, and all kinds of good information. So make sure you stay tuned for that video. Also, if you are studying anatomy and physiology, make sure you become a member of my channel because I've uploaded my best-selling program, How to Study for Anatomy and Physiology, there. In this program, I teach how I went from very average grades, actually failing anatomy, to acing it, and I've taught thousands of other students to do it as well. So you definitely don't want to miss that. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video, and I can't wait to see you then. Love you. Bye.